Okay, this is like an un this is an unneeded no one asked for story time that I'm currently doing on my TikTok. And so if you don't follow me on TikTok, you should do it. Um, I'm not really like I don't post that much, which is the most I've posted because of the long ass story that I'm going to tell you about um, the little southern guy I met last November. So like just a handful of months ago. Um and how he like kind of like uh, let's say f screwed me up mentally and emotionally because I fell for it hard. Um, I mean, it just it just strung me along a little bit, and um, but in no way am I like bashing him or anything. It's just a story of how everything went down. So at this time. I was an assistant manager at Dollar Tree and at this time you all know I was like bouncing from like one store to another from my original store so I was just filling in to fill in the gaps for people who aren't there. We had a shortage of like managers because again no one really wants to work at Dollar Tree because they suck as all get out and my old store that let me go, well that sort of let me go the district manager let me go um another story for another day um but um that pretty much turned into the ghetto that police called at one point there was a fight what between a manager and a stalker um and you know, both females um not like that's surprising to be perfectly honest. Um, the store went downhill as soon after I left. So i um, kind of glad I left because there was a lot of drama at this place. So um, anyway, moving on. I was at the store filling in. The place is a hot mess. So I was there just to help like stock and clean up a little bit. Met some really nice people um, within the store, like working with them. Made it more, more comfortable and easy to just go to work and enjoy my night because I usually work at like the evenings at that time I still work evenings but um I don't work over I didn't work overnight at this time um so one there was one night back in November it was like I want to say it was a Saturday like less than a week before Thanksgiving and um me I'm like uh, I'm stressed out depressed I have anxiety and all this f fun stuff um, so I go on my lunch break um, so 30 minutes get a lunch break because they work over like six six hours or so um, so I stand outside I think it was like I had a cigarette or something I'm not entirely sure um, I know it's a nasty habit, but I can't break it right now, so, um, but I guess I was on my phone scrolling through, like, Facebook or Instagram, all my socials to see what stupid shit's going on. I guess this guy, like, walked past me and went to the store. I didn't even notice who anyone at that point going into the store out. I'm just, like, in a daze. Um, so I go back in. I get some of my work done. I go do back a cashier as a manager. I'm not really supposed to be on the register, but I'm back up because, again, I'm short-staffed at this place. Um, so this guy, he, like, caught my eye, and he's, I looked like he was, like, this, he was looking at me, so I'm just like, yeah, whatever, I'm not really in the mood for this. Um, so he came specifically to my line. A lady was behind him. He's like, oh, why don't you go in front of me and this and that. So I was like, what's this guy up to? I'm like, because he was really cute. Like, super cute. And, um, he had this, like, look about him. Like, I feel like he was, like, in the military or something. So I, that was just my assumption. I was way wrong. But, um, but super cute. And 
totally kind of the guy I would go for. Um, nice eyes, nice smile. Um, but again, I'm just like not really in the mood for like uh, going after guys and stuff like that. So um, he comes up and like gets like some, I guess, some snacks and stuff like that because I guess he's in town for like work and stuff like that. I'm like, he said he's from like Lake Elos in Mississippi, but he originally's from Texas, I guess. That's what he told me. So, um, and once he opened his mouth and like spoke to me, I was I just melted into a puddle. I was like, your accent is sexy. <laughs> I didn't say that, but in my mind, I'm like, are you for real? Where have you been all my life? <laughs> so, you're super cute, southern accent. Like, you don't, I don't hear that very much around here because it's Arizona. I don't get many cute guys around here. So, um, so I was like, okay, here we go. And he, once I like, like was ringing him up and stuff, he's, he, he's like, so it's like a weird question. So I'm like, I'm, not from around here and I wanted to go up for a hike tomorrow. I wanted to see if you wanted to come with me and just accompany me. And so I was like, it's a Sunday. I have a day off. So I'm like, yeah. I was like debating because there's a guy I don't know and this and that. I'm like, yeah, sure. Why the hell not? I'll go. Um, get out of the house. It's some exercise. Fresh air. It's going to at this time, it's like super nice outside. It's not hot. It just cooled off. It's n middle of November. So it's kind of cool, but not hot either. So it's not super cold, but it's like right in, in between. So um, so I gave him his, he gave me his number. I gave him my number. And it's like, like 10, 15 minutes after he left and got back, I guess, back to his hotel. He was staying at, um, he messaged me and I kept we kept messaging each other until I got off of work and um he asked me if I wanted to come by and just talk and stuff like that and to get to know each other before we go on our hike and this and that and I'm like no, I'm already heading home I'm already almost at home anyway so, like, so how far you live from your work about 10 uh, 10 minutes or so not very far so we just had a back and forth conversation until we went to bed and um, we just made plans to meet up at his hotel to get like breakfast and stuff like that um, around like 8 o'clock or so in the morning. I did not tell my mom anything of what went down at work because when I came home it was kind of late so everyone was already kind of in bed. Um, so actually it was just... Yeah, everyone was in bed. Um, so I go to bed, like I text him, and da da da, fall asleep. I get up about, meet up about 8 o'clock in the morning at his hotel. Um, he's still in his pajamas once I get there. I'm like already all decked out. I'm like, my, I got my Chase Elliott hat on, like my black one that I have, like with the camo, black, all black night hat. Um, Shorts, t-shirt, but literally the worst shirt I'm wearing. I was the one I wore the day I met him. Um, well, the day I went hiking with him. Um, and got my shoes on. I was ready to go. He's like, oh, you're all set and ready to go. I'm like, yep. Pretty sure. <laughs> um, I got this time. I was like, it's kind of foggy. It was kind of foggy out. And this and that because early in the morning. Just before, like, it was just before 8 o'clock. So, um, we got some breakfast. Talked a little bit, found out he had a son, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. He's like, show me his son, who's like super cute. He's like, going on about a year old, a little over a year now. Um, so it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. He's like from Mississippi. Well, he's from Texas, but lives in Mississippi. And I'm like, oh, I've never knew anybody from Mississippi, so it was pretty cool to see what's going on over there. He said nothing happens out there, so. Oh, it's like flat and nothing to do. So, um, the most of what you're just going to get was doing this, this hike. Cause 
we have a bunch of mountains out here in Arizona that do nice hikes and stuff like that. There's a lot of great views pretty much from anywhere in the area. Um, so we decided well, we're going to Camelback Mountain. I know nothing about Camelback Mountain and the, that trail or whatever. Um, let's just say it's not for those who are out of shape. Um, I'm not saying I'm in shape, but I'm not out of shape either. I'm just not in the greatest shape that I would like to be in. Um, we're both, we were both kind of like eh, in eh shape. So, but, um, so after breakfast, we go up to his room so he can get changed into other clothes and stuff like that and get like waters and paterades and stuff like that. Um, get all set, ready to go. We go get in his truck. Nice ass truck, I would say. So it was a Ford. I forgot if it was a Ford Raptor or a Ford Ranger. I don't remember, but it was a really nice truck. But it was like an Eco Boost kind of like one, and it was it was really nice. Um, we talked a little bit like about where he's from and um, what kind of truck he drives. And when he's at home, he's like he has a Tacoma, like me. And I'm like, yes, we're soulmates. Or like we like the same kind of music. We love country. We like, pop, like, I can listen to some pop, but not much. But whatever is like really vibing, I'll I'll listen to it. Um, so we just talked all the way there. Um, it was a good conversation. No really like awkward moments. It was like very just easy flow. Um. um I didn't realize Camelback Mountain was like such a drive. It was like maybe, I want to say 30 minutes from where we were. Um, like where I am, I'm like 20 to 30 minutes away from Phoenix, like west of Phoenix. So, um, like it doesn't take very long to get to like Phoenix in general, but it's just it depends on hang on traffic. It's like 20, 30 minutes at most, 30 minutes at most. Um, so we get there and this place is pretty popular apparently. So you have to get there early, get a parking spot. There was already a lot of people there. Um, by the time we got there, it was like maybe nine o'clock at this time. Um, nine, nine thirty. I don't know what time we actually got there, but we took our time. We got our stuff together, got up there and he did this gesture where like he, like I was on like, like here's the street here's me and there's him so he takes me like moves me around to this side where all the cars are parked and he's over here so he's not, I'm not walking where all the cars are coming in and out so I'm like oh that's sweet um he made like he made like a little gestures throughout the day that was like my heart it melted um so I n never really experienced that with anyone so um so I was kind of like I'm spitting at this point. Um, okay. It's a wild house here. Um, but anyway, we go, we get our hike started. And of course, it's going to take us a little bit to get up this damn mountain because it's like more of a rock climb than a hike. Because <laughs> there's like so many steep ass slopes and rocks you have to climb up. I almost died a couple times. Almost twisted my ankle a few times. Um, but on the way up, like I was trying to climb up, um, these rocks and stuff like that. He would like touch my, <laughs> I don't try to not be like so graphic, but like that graphic, but like he took, like put his hand on my butt and just pushed me up a little bit so I wouldn't fall backwards. So he was like doing those kind of things and every once in a while we would stop and like grab some water, take a breather cause I'm not in shape. He's not in shape. So we're all like <gasps> already out of breath. My legs hurt. I have bad knees. Um, yes, I'm like not even 30 yet and I have bad knees. It's okay. So that's a story for another time. Um, uh, so like the first stop, like the, uh, it was more like the second stop we made, like breather. He like, we like looked out the view. It was like, oh, it's nice and pretty. It's beautiful out here. 
and um, he had like admitted like when he came into my store, into the store I was working, he's like, I wanted to admit that when I first saw you, like I th- kind of thought you were a bitch, like just the look I had on my face at that time was like, yeah, that's a fair assumption. So, I'm not offended by that at all. Um, so, I'm not offended by that. Um, so I, I guess you were having a bad day. I'm like, it was kind of a, it was a rough, rough one. Um, so, um, so we kept kept going and this and that and um, I lost my train of thought here. Like on the way up, it's like it took us a while because we kept stopping, stuff like that. Because again, we're out of shape. I'm gonna keep repeating this: we're out of shape, we're sweaty, out of breath. But eventually, like a couple hours later, we're up at the top of the mountain so we sat there for a while because we were not ready to go back down because it would take forever um so um uh, ow, ow. Uh, I'm gonna take this off it's driving me nuts um so we sat and sat up at the top enjoyed the view it was a gorgeous day it was like mid 70s the sun was out no really like cloud in the sky um a lot of people were there obviously like up there taking pictures and being like all touristy and just it was just we're all, all everyone went all the there was kids old people <laughs> young people you name it just a mixture of all people so we sat down had a few snacks and drank some more gatorade and rehydrate um like, I would, we would stand up and, like, he would come up behind me, do that cute little, like, hug from behind thing. We would stand there and just lean, I would just lean against him. He would lay his head on top of my head. It was just like that for, like, the entire afternoon while we were up there. It was like, we would just talk about the most random shit. It was like, I never had to, never had felt that comfortable with somebody ever. And I admitted that to him. It's like, yeah, I feel the same way. And it was just like, less than 24 hours literally less than that since i met this guy and i'm like this is just too good to be true too good to be true. No, i was right it was too good to be true but i'll get to that in a second um so eventually like we were talking about how at the back of his hotel there was like a hot tub we go there and chill out relax and just spend some time with each other and um so on the way down that's all we thought about <laughs> we we're making jokes saying stupid shit to each other and like I would when I told him I was from San Diego he's like trying try to make jokes about the stigma and like stereotype of San Diego or California girls how they're all like blonde ditzy and stupid da, 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 da. I'm like hey I'm offended because I'm from California and I'm not like that so I kept making stupid jokes knowing it would get under my skin so um anyway um and I'll be right back. <sighs> okay, I'm back. I need to just lock my door because everyone's getting stupid out there. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we were talking like saying stupid shit on the all the way down. Why is how we got down? My feet were hurting, and we were just both out of breath. We were tired, sweaty, and it was just ugh. we were just ready to relax. So all the way back, we were like listening to music, talking, start still getting to know each other more um, about our backgrounds and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, so we finally got back to his hotel apartment where I live in a house full of kids. It's really obnoxious. Um, anyway, um, like he dropped me off at like my truck so I can go home, grab like some, grab like a change of clothes and um, extra pair of clothes and my bathing suit so we can go in the hot tub, whatever. A hotel literally was like five minutes from my house, so 
and it takes me very long, but it took longer than it should because my mother, the overdramatic person that she is, the overprotective person that she is, grilled me for about 20, 30 minutes, and I'm like, oh, good God, here we go. And it was just like, you don't know this guy, and this and that, and that, that, that. she made me feel like I was like a, with a predator or something, and I'm like, it's like, I'm like, like, if, like, you would, I told her, like, if anything bad had happened, it would have happened already. He had done nothing to me. He was such a sweetheart. He's been a sweetheart all day. He's super nice, super friendly, and I'm like, just, just stop. So I left. Um, I went to, back to his hotel, I went down to the hot tub, got flirting some more, and talking, and just going into detail about what we do for work. And our family lives and da, da 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 the usual like twenty question kind of thing, but um, we were just enjoying our time together. Um, like he was had been there for a few weeks and he had wish he um, had met me like a couple weeks prior, so we had to spend some more time together. But it was just timing; it was awful. But um, so. Um, what was I saying? Uh, so I left, I purposely left my phone and stuff in my, in his room. I went back, went back up to his room. I changed into some dry clothes, like my pajama pants and stuff like that. Um, sports bra, t-shirt, like I was, we were just getting comfortable, just talking, cuddling, watching. We watched Monster House like that. Um, animated movie that came out oh it's been a long time um, I enjoy that movie clearly he does too um, like I started like scratching his back I had I at the time I had like acrylic not acrylic like gel nails I can still see like that outline of like my nail still is trying to natural nails coming through um, so I like scratch his back, like to I get a man's attention and make him like melt. You scratch his back and his head, like his hair, with your nails. It just drives them nuts. Um, so, and then he gave me a back massage because my back was killing me. My back is currently killing me right now. I could use a back massage, but um, I have no one to do that for me. So. Single AF for life, <laughs> um, because no one can handle me apparently. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. No, I don't have the coronavirus. <laughs> but I've I've had this cough nonstop for a while now, so um, I'm kind of like my my dad when it comes to having something wrong with you, I'm like. I've been having this constant cough since like three years now, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, I'm nervous. I'm just having anxiety right now. My chest hurts. Ow. So, anyway, um, and then like one thing led to another. But I'm gonna keep this PG. It's like, did adult things. Did I not expect to happen, but it happened. Um, after that, like, ten minutes after that, the phone rings, and I'm like, oh my god, here we go. So, as soon as I leave the the room, like, not the room itself, but, like, the bedroom where the bed is, into, like, the main area where the couch and kitchen and stuff like that is in this hotel, um, I look at my phone, and I'm like, my phone just has blown uh, from like my mom, my dad, my sister, my sister's boyfriend. I'm like, okay, this is getting out of fucking hand. So I call them back, and um, like they, t my sister called the hotel a couple times, trying to find me. And then my clearly, according to my mom, she had um, driven by the hotel where I was staying at, like not staying at, but like I was at. I was like, for the love of God, I can't do anything without being interrogated. And, um, I'm like, what am I, 12? I am a grown-ass woman. I am 28 years old. It's just laughable that my whole family are this retarded. Um, 
and over dramatic and overly protective like to the point where I'm about to punch a freaking wall and while I'm on the phone I'm telling them they're all freaking retarded I need to calm the fuck down so um after that like the guy was over here he was like laughing his ass off I was hilarious I'm like oh I thought I'm so glad you find this hilarious because this is embarrassing for me and for my soul so and it's really stressful welcome to my family <sighs> well I said welcome to like experiencing my family firsthand so after that I was just like I like on the couch like just some like not it's just not okay so we just sat there he like he lays his head down on my lap and we just like was scratching it like playing with his hair a little bit because that like calms me down apparently um more than him but he was like we were talking and um he was getting to the point where he had to go to bed because he had to get up early in the morning to go to work because he was in town for work from whatever he did like he worked with like like airplane parts or something like that um where he had to travel a lot and been all around the country the world whatever he was so um he clearly doesn't travel anymore but um Stupid computer is so dirty. Um, anyway. So, I was, like, really reluctant to just leave and go home because I did not want to face what I wanted to face when I got home. Because I was about to freaking lose it. I blew up. I freaking blew up. But my mom and my sister, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you people? So. So, we text, text each other till he fell asleep. The next day, like, he asked me if I wanted to come back to his hotel room to spend some time with him. I'm not doing anything like drastic. It's just um, hang out with him to drink his lunch break, which is like a half hour, hour. I don't even know how long it was. Um, just to hang out, cuddle, talk, and just enjoy our time together. And then he invited me back to his room later that night after I got off of work. So I spent the night with him um because as soon as I got there I was he was already asleep because it was like I didn't get there until about after 11 o'clock because uh, I didn't get out of work until about 10 10 30 ish so um he was just like make time go faster come see me and this and that he was being all cute sweet and um you were being all flirty and I was like oh I know I miss you too this and that like we were already a couple kind of thing but we're not really um but so he gave me his room key so I just let myself in and um so I just got like got to my pajamas got into bed and um it took, took him a little bit to figure out was there because he was already passed out asleep like he's a hard sleeper like he is a deep sleeper so um it took him like 10 20 minutes to figure out I was there cuddle with me and um I went to sleep because I was super tired super super tired and then like he had to get up super early in the morning it was like 5 6 o'clock in the morning and of course one thing led to another things happened again and um of course my sister was being awkward as F A F I'm like, can you stop? <laughs> Just stop. Um, so things happened again. And, um, like, he went, got up, got ready for work, left a little bit. I kind of stayed there until he got back from for his lunch break. So I, like, I stayed there. I took a shower and whatnot. Just made myself relax. I watched some Netflix. I watched some, like, cheesy Christmas movie. And like I was in the middle of it when he came in to, and we just sat there snuggled. I played with his hair again, and um, so um, uh, till the movie was over, and then he had to go back to work. Um, but I saw him again, like. 
later that night when I went into work because that was like his last full day there and I couldn't stay the he asked me to stay the night again but I couldn't because I had the cat sit stupid fucking cat I want the cat to die um ruined my chances again um but it was his last like day full day there because he was leaving the next morning to go back to Mississippi um so later that night I didn't know he was so when he left like after his lunch break I was like I will never get to see this guy again that's gonna be so upsetting um oh sorry oh, my freaking jaw hurts um but we had messaged each, we're messaging each other throughout the day again and um so I was just trying to get some hints from this guy like what he's all about like what's what is what's more of his backstory like he has a kid but does he have like a significant other back home or it's just like what's that relationship like relationship like with his like baby mama whatever what was and then ask that question because you would assume a guy comes up to you like at your work or whatever wherever you are hits on you and like asks you basically asks you out you just assume he is single so that's what I assume um so I get out of the shower get comfortable and whatnot and after he leaves like I kind of did some snooping I don't suggest it but I did some snooping um his bag in his closet. I just looked at the label. I'm like, this isn't, that's not his name, but I'll just like, took a picture of the address and stuff like that and did some research, do some research at a later time. Um, I wasn't like in a hurry to go do all those deep, dark research crap, but um, uh, later that night, he came, like, he came in and surprised me at work. So we hung out at my work a little bit, like, while, until he had to actually leave to go back to his hotel to get some sleep, to go to the airport in the morning. I was, like, super depressed. Ugh, it was, uh, he's so cute, though. He smelled, like, he smelled so freaking good, like, his shampoo, the stuff like that he had got from my work. Um, I'm like, oh, it smells so good. And like, I had left my pajama pants that I wore that night. Um, I was with him in my bag and I had taken it out since because I, I kept forgetting about it and I take it out and I smell it and it smelled, still smelled like him. And I'm like, flashback, this is what led to me wanting to tell the story. Um, so, so after he left, I was super sad and and what really this is where it got like really irritating um and took a twist for like me not like trusting men uh like I don't hate men but I just don't trust them at this point um like he had messaged me and texted me like while he was at the airport that da, 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 and landed and this other guy so I, I keep sending him pictures of me like all dolled up or whatnot or just bare face um to show him like hey i'm still thinking about you and this and that and just to, here's a photo for when you land it's like the last time i heard from him was like when he landed and stuff like that i was like so glad you made it home safely um and whatnot so and after that not a word from him after that not a word like, I was sending him messages, like, constantly, and then he would just, I'd see him, just, I'd just be left on red for, like, days. And I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? So, after a few days, I did some digging, and I found some things that I did not want to find out. Um, I found out he had a girlfriend back home, and I confronted him on it and, and I saw he was having another baby with this person um but I'm like why didn't you not tell me any of this like you didn't ask and this and that I'm like why would I have to ask that question these questions like like I would just assume I, why would I have to ask 
that question when you had come up to me and asked me out and this and that and I'm like so it was very very annoying it really pissed me off but he, like he said everything I said to you was true there were like all these messages like you were flirting this and that and whatnot we like still after that like I still had feelings for this guy even though he was like still seeing this girl back home and I'm like, well, I knew that was too good to be true. And, um, so it was, it is what it is. And, um, till this day, I still think about him constantly. And like, after, like the night he left, like he'd send me like a message, like this song and this song, like mm, it's like our song. It makes me think like he, like when I confide him, he still claims like he still listens to these songs every single night before he went to bed just to make himself feel better. I'm like, but how does your girlfriend feel about this? That's my question. Not not a girlfriend anymore. Um, they're now married. As of like December, like just before Christmas, I find this out. Like he was messing with me a little bit beforehand. And I'm like, what what so I haven't really talked to him since like after Christmas and I still see him like on this app that we use to message that he still looks at my messages every once in a while I'll look at him see what if he was the last time he's been on and so every once in a while I just get that little memory in my head like what could have been what could have been um so Every once in a while, I get this urge to like message him and be like, Hi, how's it going? This and that. Hope everything's okay and this and that. Uh, but if I do, it's just going to drive me back into that rabbit hole of misery and discontent. So, um, like, everyone in my family was like, grilling me, like, What's his last name? What's his name? Da -da -da. I'm like, I gave them the answers that I knew. And they were like, concerned we got all these red flags and this and that and I'm like I'm like whatever you guys can have your red flags but it is what it is and um I don't trust men all that much right now so I'm epically and sadly single um for the time being but because right now my life is super hectic I have work watching kids and um trying to get any kind of sleep I can which I'm I still have to call out of work next like hour or so just to let them know I'm not gonna be there tonight because one of my back hurts and I don't feel very well today so um and some days are not the greatest for me anyway so um but anyway I've been talking forever that was like my little spiel um the whole southern guy thing um every day I still think about him constantly and it annoys the shit out of me when I shouldn't. So every time these songs come on that I, uh, like that Kane Brown song, um, that one thing, right? And then, um, that 10,000 hours song with Justin Bieber and whatever. So every time those two songs come on, I'm like, fuck my life, dude. So, um, I'm going to get off of here and call into work for next hour or so to let them know I'm not going to be there because I don't feel all that great and um like my stomach's upset I have like an easily sensitive stomach so um I won't be able to make it through the night especially with how busy Sundays have been getting and with the lack of help that we get on Sundays um I'm not doing it just because of that reason I'm not doing it for that reason um I really just I honestly don't feel good today um so I'm going to take the night off and go back in tomorrow and probably work the rest of the week and take Friday off and whatnot. So, um, just make up that time. But anyway, I'm going to get off here and I'm going to make another video at a later day to talk about how much I hate this damn fucking coronavirus who's ruining my life. <laughs>